Watch and wait for Christ's coming like candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. We light this candle for peace. We light this candle in joy. How does a weary world practice love? By sending cards and picking up the phone. By practicing empathy and assuming the best in others. By learning people's stories and finding common ground. By advocating for justice and saving a place at the table. There are a million ways to practice love. So today we light the candle of love as a reminder and a charge. With God's help, may we bring love into a weary world. Amen. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Miss Brooklyn. Happy Christmas Eve. Do you say Happy Christmas Eve or Merry Christmas Eve? Right? It's, I mean, yeah, it could be either. I was wondering. Do you know much about your name? Hmm. Right, okay. Do you have a name that you go by that is not the name on your birth certificate? Okay. What is yours? Nolly. Okay, what's, your, what's on your birth certificate? Nolan. Nolan is on your birth certificate and your nickname is Nolly, okay? Anybody else? No? Well, do you know that we have several people here on staff that do, oh, Pastor Kate, hold on. What, what is on your birth certificate? Not Kate. Mm. <laughs> what's, what's on your birth certificate? Emily Catherine. Ooh, okay, okay. Anybody else? I think right over here on staff we were talking, yep, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. What is on your birth certificate? Robbie. Robbie. Okay, and what do you go by? Miranda. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, oh, I want to know this one. Zebulon. Say that again. Zebulon. That's my full name, Zebulon Philip Wright. And that's why you go by Zebulon. And that's why I go by Zebulon. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, oh, okay. Jocelyn. Jocelyn, and what do you go by? Odessa. Okay. See? Okay. I always wanted to be a game show host. This feels very... Anybody else? <laughs> no? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. My actual name is Khadija, but I go by Katie. <laughs> okay. So on my birth certificate, it says Brooke with an E. And my nickname is Brooklyn. Look at all these nicknames and funny things that we have. I was thinking about our story today that we're going to hear in the Bible about Elizabeth and Zachariah. See, they were given, God, God blessed them with a baby. And they had a baby, and they named him, does anybody remember what Elizabeth named her baby? Hmm, she, she named him, huh? Zachariah Jr. Zachariah Jr. Well, you see, Pastor Kate, Pastor Emily, that could have been correct. <laughs> In Palestine, the tradition was that when you had a son born, you named the son after the grandfather or the dad. So if he was named after his dad, Elizabeth would have had Zachariah the second. Do we have a book in the Bible named Zachariah the second? No. So here's the thing. God had blessed Elizabeth and Zachariah with this beautiful baby boy, but he said he is to have a special name. You need to listen to me. Follow my instructions. His name is to be John. Do you remember what John means? God is gracious. Do you know why that was fit perfectly? Elizabeth was so old when she had a baby. She thought she would never get to have a baby. And then she was pregnant and God blessed her and they named God is gracious, John. Well, then Mary found out she was pregnant, and they said, 
you shall name him Jesus. We also call him Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Jesus literally came and he was with us. And so he was a baby. You are correct, Olena. So my thought is Elizabeth listened and Mary listened. And do we listen? That's a really big decision. If God told you, hey, you're going to have to name this baby Zebulon the third. <laughs> and you're like, but I was going to name him Tyler. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal if you have to listen to God. But these women both did. And it amazes me. It amazes me how faithful they were to God and what he told them. I hope today that we can be just as faithful as Mary and Elizabeth, and we can remember the names that we were given are so special. Whether you go by the name on your birth certificate or by your nickname, you are each special and chosen by name. Will you pray with me? Okay. Dear, God, Dear God, thank you for knowing me by name, by claiming me as yours, and loving me. Help me be like Elizabeth and Mary. Amen. Let us pray. God of the universe, open our eyes as if for the first time so that we might see your world with awe and wonder once again. Let us make room for wonder, reading this text with awe and gratitude. For I am confident that in doing so, we will not only find you in the hallways of our thoughts, but in the pathways of our hearts. With gratitude we pray, keep us open. Amen. Today's reading is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with the shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The word of the Lord.
Our gospel reading this morning comes from Luke 1, verses 57 through 66. Listen to this. Now, the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord has shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. (laughs) They said to her, "Uh, none of your relatives have this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue freed and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. What amazes you? One of the joys of parenting is the opportunity to recapture amazement through the eyes of a child. Like a lot of us, I do most of my banking through my mobile app. But every now and then, I actually have to go to the bank to complete a transaction. And recently, my youngest son was in the van as I went through the bank drive through lane. What's this? He exclaimed. I explained that this was the bank. And as I put my information into the vacuum tube and sent it over to the office, Cohen stared in amazement. What is that? <laughs> and in his eyes, I understood. It did seem like a magical portal where my information was supernaturally transported to the bank. Something I deemed fairly ordinary was absolutely amazing to him. When was the last time you were amazed at something? And for today's person purposes, we're talking about amazed in a good way. <laughs> What was the last thing to capture your attention, to make you wonder, just how does that work? Was it a magician on TV or a spectacular Christmas lights display? Think about what has amazed you lately. And if you haven't already, I invite you to take out your phone, get excited, y'all, and participate in a new thing we're doing. There's nothing else going on today. Let's try something new. We are gonna build a live word cloud. Now, if this is is making you anxious, raise your hands, and we have some young people who will come and help you. So Camden will go help Marjorie, raise your hands, but you scan the QR code with your phone. There's also minty.com, and you can enter that code. You can zoom in on the QR code if you need. Again, just wave your hand, and there are delightful children who will come help. Gail needs help. Is there someone who can go help Miss Gail? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? It's too far from here. Yep. If you need to move to get the QR code, this is very exciting. And I want to know what amazes you. Is it the vacuum tubes at the bank? Now for this to work really well, I invite you to keep your responses to like one or two words. But what amazes you? Kindness. 
a baby's first breath or first giggle, the strength of mothers or the patient of fathers. What amazes you? Is it our choir and their festival of joy last week? Is it Pat Staley's peanut brittle or Wileen's cranberry bread? Is it tacos or queso? Is it love and grace and mercy? What amazes you, mountains or beaches? Teachers, nurses, public servants, your grandchildren or your grandparents? I invite you to keep, as the sermon bit, as we go through the sermon, keep adding what amazes you. And hit it, Richardson is going to make a magical live word cloud appear. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Can we see it now? See, see how we're going. We got some answers. Camden is here to help. Oh, look at that. Good job, you guys. I don't know if we can make it bigger, but oh, look at that. Keith, Keith's got this. I see a family in there, but keep adding it. And I, I want to focus on amazement this morning because this is a very important reoccurrence in Luke's Christmas story. In addition to the amazement of Elizabeth and Zechariah's friends and neighbors this morning, we also see this word amazement when all those in Bethlehem hear the shepherds' good news of great joy as well as Mary and Joseph are amazed after they receive Simeon's blessing in the temple days after Jesus' birth. We can also imagine that Zechariah was filled with amazement, wonder, and awe as his voice returned as instantly as it had left him, as he completed the angel's instruction and named his firstborn. As Ms. Brooklyn talked about with our young people, the custom for many Palestinian families of Jesus' time was to name boys after their grandfathers, or if not, then their fathers. As Elizabeth and Zechariah had been waiting so long for this baby boy, I mean, she might have been like 39, as righteous peoples who faithfully followed tradition, their neighbors surely expected them to follow this format. Aren't you going to name him Zechariah? But Elizabeth had other ideas. Maybe Zechariah had written her a note explaining his angelic vision. Maybe she had her own vision or nudge from the Holy Spirit. Either way, she declares proudly that his name is John. John meaning God is gracious. The neighbors are shocked, not really believing to her, and turn to Zechariah to get the real name. <laughs> Imagine their surprise when Zechariah agrees with his wife that their child is to be named John. In response, the neighbors and relatives stop arguing and instead choose to be amazed at these things happening. The first words Zechariah then sings are praises of God. God whose favor is with him. God whose presence is real. God who is an intervening in human history. Everyone is in awe, a holy fear of what will happen next. Amazement, wonder, awe, pondering. In a weary world, it is easy to bypass these sort of things. There are so many things we take for granted like babies being born, presents under the Christmas tree, cars that drive us wherever we want to go, hot water on demand, clean water on demand for that matter. It is easy to focus on what is weighing us down or what we don't have or what's always been there. 
It is easy to give into exhaustion instead of seeking amazement. But a world without amazement is a world without joy. And what is the Christmas story without amazement? We are in danger of losing our amazement at the Christmas story as it has been domesticated, sentimentalized, stripped of its otherworldliness, taken for granted. We sing carols of a baby who doesn't cry and a mother who is gentle, meek, and mild. We sanitize the stable and isolate the family and speed up the magi. We've seen so many pictures and own so many nativity sets that we think this story is something that can be contained, something that can fit into a box. We lose the wildness of this story with the commercialization of Christmas. It's so easy to focus on the wrong things. And with the weariness of the world, it's hard to find the energy to rejoice, to witness the amazement still present here today. Elizabeth's neighbors could have said, big deal, another baby. Why'd you wait so long to have one anyway? Don't you know your parents want to be grandparents? They could have written it off as just another ordinary, everyday event. In the face of weariness and poverty and oppression, no one would blame them. Yet they chose joy. They chose wonder. They allowed themselves to be amazed at what God was doing in their midst. And look at what God is doing in our midst. Right, Richardson? You're doing great. Look at all these things that are amazing, that are so big, we, so many of them, we can't actually see them all. But I saw the one in the middle. Did y'all see the one in the middle? It was God. And don't worry, I will get this photo and send it out so you can see everything everybody put in there. Don't worry, guys. But I wonder this morning, was it hard or easy for you to think of something that amazed you in a good way? Was it right on your tip of your tongue, or did you have to reach for it? What gets in the way of amazement in your life? What is the roadblock that is stopping you from embracing joy? Is it resentment? Well, I didn't get that. Why should she? Is it apathy? <laughs> That happens every day. Who cares if he passed all his classes? Is it lack of curiosity or an obsession with efficiency or simply depression? Is it arrogance or annoyance? If you know everything, then nothing is amazing. It is our calling at Christmas to recapture amazement to set aside our values of safety, certainty, and productivity. It is our calling to look at what's really in the Bible and see a Christmas story that uplifts the voices of women, that sings with amazement at God turning the world upside down, that values community, that allows Mary and Zechariah to be prophets, that makes room for the most vulnerable, that sees God's hand in an otherwise ordinary story. And so what makes us more likely to encounter joy, amazement, thrills of hope in a weary world? From Luke 1, we can gather some ideas. Build relationships with your neighbors. Find joy in connection. Go to worship regularly, even if it renders you speechless. <laughs> Boldly claim what God is doing in your life, even if you don't understand it all yet. 
Find ways to create and build up the gift of love. For it is love that comes down at Advent and at Christmas. Love between couples, between families, within a faith community, between neighbors, and with all of those who have ears to hear. Elizabeth's neighbors were amazed that two parents could agree on a name outside of tradition. They were amazed that a priest could speak again. They were amazed at the unlikely pregnancy and successful birth of a baby boy who would one day point to their Savior, the one they had been waiting for all Advent, I mean all those years. You faithful people at WPC amaze me all the time. We had set a dream budget this year, and then pledges came in to support it. And now at the end of the year, you have fulfilled those pledges and more. And we end the year in a very stable financial place. <laughs> and if that's not amazing enough, on top of that, you have given through our church $66,000 outside of our operating expenses to a variety of mission organizations locally and around the world. I am amazed at the relationships you build, at the way you care for one another, even as you carry your own burdens. You continue to open your hearts to the possibility of joy, wonder, and amazement. You step out of your comfort zone and offer us a jazzy joy that left us all feeling amazed. You overflow with quilts and toys and shelter sandwiches and New Day bags and welcome home donations and a full grocery cart, not just now but all year long. You even are going to show up to worship two times on Christmas Eve Sunday. You refuse to let weariness and grief and illness define you. Instead, in the words of our psalm this morning, those who go out weeping shall come home with shouts of joy. So friends, find a chance to be amazed this Christmas. Find a way through the weariness to rejoicing. Wonder at the works of God's love, at the power of redemption, at the gift of grace. Allow yourselves to be amazed once more at the good news of great joy that is for us, that is awaiting us all. The thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. May that gift be in our hearts now and forevermore. Amen. Bye.
family of faith, as you leave this place, you go into a weary world. So speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection. Hold on to hope. And remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved. So go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.